morning everybody how cool is that <laughs> uh, it's always awesome when you come out and um, see some wildlife um, had the bald eagle back up here again just above me a <clears throat> um, little cold this morning uh, 25 degrees when I got here already a, a, an awesome day just just having their presence and blessing when you come out it's warming up really nicely uh, Pretty much no breeze and uh, expecting it to get into the 40s uh, which would be great um, looking at water conditions it is up <clears throat> we've had a string of, of warmer days and so that's allowed a lot of the stuff that froze um, during the cold last last cold snap uh, to kind of let go and um, so the water the rivers back up to about 450 ish somewhere in there so the water is off color uh, it does have, I mean, it's it's got some relative clarity to it, about a f maybe a, a foot. Um, but compared to the last time I was here, it's definitely got some color to it. Last time I was here was about two months ago, so it's been a while. All right, so I'm just going to start off with some nymphing. Uh, got my Shadow X, and uh, it's all set up. And if you watched the last video... Um, I did a little tying uh, under the lamp, uh, tying up the comp hair zero that I uh, um, had utilized for many years in competition. If you hadn't seen the comp video, uh, go ahead and click somewhere up in here, either that side or this side. Don't know exactly where, but uh, check that out. Uh, learn how to tie that fly. Very basic, but at the same time. Uh, some good techniques in there and if you haven't already subscribe I uh, appreciate all those that have subscribed give it that thumbs up and hit the bell get those notifications for those new videos I'm posting anyway follow along we'll see what happens it's a beautiful day regardless all right let's go fish uh, today like I mentioned I am gonna run the hair's ear uh, that I had tied in the previous under the water or uh, sorry under the lamp uh, tutorial there and uh, uh, give that a go you know in this river lots of crane fly larva lots of um, uh, grubby uh, looking aquatic moth type larva that live in here uh, as well as caddis and whatnot so having something that's gonna sit I don't know if you guys will be able to see that all that well um, I'll show it to you and I apologize I know people have been asking for me to show flies in the videos and I've been terrible about that so I'll definitely try to get that one in in this one because uh, I said it just now <laughs> I have this on my point uh, size this one's a size 12 with a 4 mil bead because the flows up I want to have weight in my rig in order to get the flies down into the zones I got a red button in for my dropper and this one's tied on a size 18 jig hook with a 28 mil bead so definitely an oversized bead and uh, we'll give that a go <clears throat> again this time of year cold water temps uh, not much hatching in the way of bluing olives or any significant hatches like that we may see a few especially if the day gets warm enough and and the uh, wind stays down but we're seeing actually quite a few midges on the surface right now and again you know just give them something they can see uh, hoping the the hair's ear will do me well but if it doesn't i mean we're obviously going to trade up techniques uh other thoughts i have in my mind are running <laughs> running an egg pattern <laughs> or running um, a jig leech or something of that sort so we'll see we'll give it a go um, <clears throat> running 5x this water isn't all that again it's not clear but at the same time I want to have a decent sink rate to help my flies get in the zone quickly all right let's give it a shot in this colder weather I've definitely chose a section of some slow water on the inside here um, not anything that's super slow um, or else you know we'd have a little bit hard harder time maintaining a drift uh, if that needs to be the case uh, I'm kind of saving that for some later 
uh, later in the day here. Uh, so we're starting up a little higher in this drainage where I know there's some springs that influence or that can have an influence on the water temperature. And uh, so we're trying to get as optimal conditions as possible with what we got going on as far as uh, winter temps. And later on in the day, as temperatures warm up, then I may drop down into some slower, deeper pools <clears throat> where we'll probably run suspension rigs or something of that sort and try that out. But anyway, bottom. We'll try here to start with. Now, obviously, the surface looks a little, may have some current or some speed to it. However, as you start to descend into the water column, uh, it slows down so the bottom of this river and there's some bigger boulders and whatnot in this area uh, that'll create a nice slow current for these fish to hold so and I'm assuming these fish are gonna be a little sluggish which also would mean their eats might be pretty light or subtle so I'll just start off by setting on everything There we are, <clears throat> nice, real light hit, just stopped. Nice brown. Again, working in from the side I'm standing on. So it was hanging in, there's a little dark margin there that I can see. Nice brown, ah, that's a good start. A little wiggly. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Let's get him back. There's another. Oh, that was another one. I missed it. Oh. There we go. Oh yeah. Smaller brown. Feisty. The hair's here. Woo. Thanks, bud. <laughs> in that break. <laughs> Sweet. These fish are feisty. I don't know if the camera picked up any of those jumps, but... Another good brown. Get you out of here, buddy. Awesome. just about three feet off my rod tip out there. And that's where that fish was holding. <clears throat> that's where reading the water comes in, just isolating those slight little slicks or, or breaks in the current to give you an idea of where those fish could be hanging out. So right there, and obviously you can see from here in, it's real slow, but if you can find those little slivers that are consistent, sometimes you have a sliver develop and then fade away, uh, look for those slivers that are constant so always be scanning the water surface and observe the water surface don't just assume that you throw a fly out there and there's going to be a fish there uh, if you can isolate and break down that water even a little bit more uh, you'll be more productive in a given section of, of water uh, and that being said even on big water um, you can break down the river that way and and make it much more approachable well, we moved down river uh, just hitting some new water again found some nice slow got a bit of a back eddy right here But comes off of a nice drop up here. So slow um, Because it's deeper uh, hopefully the water um, Closer to the bottom will be slow moving where these fish uh, Seem to be really wanting to hold There we are Yes Getting it on the bottom Nice brown.
Man, as cold as these fish are, they, they being active. Cool. Nope. <laughs> Sweet. Let's try it again. So we moved down to a different area. Um, that last spot, you know, some good water, but I uh, just couldn't get any of the fish to move. Uh, I did get one, uh, which was cool, nice brown, but you know, dropped back into some of that slower water, trying to match that water type, and just you know, couldn't find anything else there. So uh, relocated to a new section, and uh, we'll give it a shot here. Uh, pretty much spend the rest of the day work in this section and uh, we'll see how we do. All right, that uh, <clears throat> hair's there still, still on the rig. And up until that last spot was still producing fish. So let's give it a shot here. There we are. Oh, the hair's there again. What? I dropped that one too. Come on, Norm. That's two, 0 for two here. Weak sauce. It's my rod. <laughs> it's the wind. <clears throat> it's the smaller hook size. And it's just me not being on it. There we are. Cool. There's one. Nice brown. <clears throat> Come here. Gotcha. Again, just had to find that slow water. All right. Thank you, Brownie. All right. Uh, I might not have got the last couple fish. I think my the memory card was maxing out and wouldn't record. So, and then I didn't record a hit the record button, or maybe I did, and that's when it, it uh, maxed out the memory <clears throat> on a larger rainbow. So, um, anyway, put an indicator on, try to get my drift out further. That's why I caught those uh, last two rainbows. Um, so three rainbows you probably did not see. <laughs> so anyway, moved up a little bit more, erased some bad or uh, memory, uh, old footage, and see if we can't get a fish that you guys can see. All right, I'm gonna switch it up. The hares here did an exceptional job today. Might be a little tough to see down there. As this angle of sun drops, it gets a little tougher to see in the water. You got all that sediment uh, murk basically, and at that angle, I think it just takes out a lot of that visual for those fish. So I'm gonna throw an egg on there and see if any willing participant will accept the egg. There's a fish. All right. Ooh. Nice brown. I hit that egg pretty hard. Yeah. She has a good view of it. Pretty fish. Awesome. Thank you, fish. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the day. Um, yeah, stuck with the hare's ear um, pretty much all, all day. And it did well from when I first got on the water uh, until I got here and you know worked it through this pool. I picked up four fish one of which you saw I know for sure I got to look back through maybe I got uh, The hit or something on the other on the uh, other 
attempts, but, um, and then just ran back through with an egg just to see if I could pick up one more, and I did. A uh, nice brown at the end there. So uh, I'll be sure to uh, show you the video or get a close up of the, the hare's ear. All right, so those are the two. Uh, the hare's ear was number one today, size 12, four mil bead or 3.8 mil bead. And then the last fish, last brown, last ditch effort to get one more fish through on the ecstasy egg. <clears throat> That's the sunburst. Um, four mil bead on it as well i think that's a that's a 14 uh 450 xc 450 let's see xc 400 both from umqua so anyway there's your flies but if you want to learn how to tie that hair's ear uh check out my video comp hair's ear i'll link that in and uh, you can check it out all right guys we'll see you in the next round uh always look forward to new upcoming videos um, try to get them, get them out at least once a week. So, um, all right. And you know where to find me, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon. Thanks to all my Patreon subscribers and my Patreon producers, my VIP and producer, uh, patrons. So, all right, guys, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Get out there and fish. Laters.